Now let's talk about a new topic here, more on the representation of orientation. So we're going to start off this topic by talking about the rotational matrix independent variables. As you know, for every rotation matrix, we have nine elements in the matrix. Uh, the first vector in that rotation matrix represents the x axis, and then the second, the second uh, vector represents the y axis, and the third vector represents the z axis. Okay. So what we're saying here is we're saying that these nine parameters, three of them are independent variables, and then six of them are related through six relationships. Okay. So the three independent variables in general, uh, general rotation matrices can be represented by rotation about x by some uh, an angle, and then rotation about y by another angle, and then rotation about z by a third angle. So these three independent variables are the angles of rotation about x, y, and z, and that represents a general rotation matrix. Okay, so these are the three independent variables. Now, if we have the three independent variables, then we can find six relationships, and these six relationships basically relate the other six uh, variables or six uh, parameters into the three independent variables. So let's see how we can find these six relationships. Let's start first with the unity condition. And that condition basically says that each one of these axes, x, y, and z of any frame has a unit of one, a unit vector of one of length one. Okay? So that's a unity condition that we have to make sure and verify that the length of each one of these axes uh, is a single unit. So having said that now, we're saying that the length of x should be one, the length of y should be one, and the length of z should be one. To find the length of x, we just take all the elements of x, these the first column, square them and add them and get the square root for them, and that would have to be equal to one if this condition is to be valid. Okay. Same thing for the y. If we are to take all the elements, the second column, all the elements of the y axis. If we square them, add them, and get the square root for them, that would sh should be equal to 1, which proves the unity of uh, this axis. And then th same thing for the z-axis. If we take the third column, uh, these elements for the third column are the representation of z-axis. So take them, square them, add them, and then take the square root for them, and that should equal to 1. Okay. So these three relationships represent the three unity conditions that we can use to get the relationships between uh, some of these nine elements in relation to the three independent variables. So now we can also look at the rotational matrix independent variables from another uh, condition, which we call here the orthogonality condition. So this orthogonality condition basically creates another uh, three relationships, uh, which makes a total of six relationships that relate um, the nine uh, elements of a rotation matrix into the three independent variables uh, and the six uh, dependent variables. So orthogonality conditions basically for the three coordinate frames, axes, they have to be perpendicular to each, uh, each other. So x, y, and z axes for any frame, they have to be perpendicular to each other, which means that the, the angle between them has to be 90 degrees. Okay. So this will give us another three equation that we can use, uh, three equations. Here we have uh, uh, axis x dot axis y. Okay, so the dot product here means that we have to find the cosine of the angle between them. And what we're saying here, we're saying that cosine of the angle between them, the angle has to be 90. That means the cosine of 90 would have to be zero. Okay. And then the same thing for uh, the angle between x and z. So we can put x vector dot z vector, and that should equal to the cosine of the angle between them. And if we're saying that the angle has to be 90 degrees, that means cosine 90 degrees, which would have to be a zero. Same thing for the y and z, these two vectors, the angle between them, between them has to be 90 degrees. So that we're saying that the cosine of the angle between them uh, needs to be zero which ensures that the cosine is of a 90 degrees, okay? Now, if we have a, a rotation matrix, how can we verify uh, these conditions? Basically, what we have to do is we have to multiply uh, the transpose of one of the vectors times uh, another vector, 
Okay, so if we transpose, if we take one of the vectors, let's say for example vector x, we take the elements of the vector x, which is the first column in the rotation matrix, we transpose that, and we multiply it by uh, the second column, which represents the y-axis. Okay, if we do this multiplication, and then we calculate how much it is, and it turns out to be zero, that means this condition is fulfilled. Okay, that means x and y are perpendicular to each other. Same thing for x and z. If we take x, for example, which is the first column on the rotation matrix, we transpose this and multiply it by z vector, which is the third column in the rotation matrix. Okay, so we take these, we multiply it by each other, and we find out what the value of this multiplication is. It has to be a scalar, of course, since this is a 1 by 3 and this is 3 by 1. That means the result will have to be 1 by 1, which is a scalar. So if it turns out to be 0, that means this condition is also fulfilled for x and z. They are perpendicular. Okay? Same thing for the third relationship here between y and z. So if we take the y vector, which is the second uh, column in the rotation matrix, if we transpose it and put it here, then multiply it by uh, the vector z, which is the third column in the rotation matrix. If we do this multiplication, we find out how much would the scalar value be after you do the multiplication. If it's zero, that means this condition is also fulfilled, and we prove that uh, y and z are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so that gives me that gives me three orthogonality conditions uh, that I can use as well to verify or find uh, some of the elements of the rotation matrix in relation to uh, the three independent variables. Now let's take an example on this. Verify the six conditions for the following rotation matrix. And the rotation matrix here is given, rotation, and it's a three by three with all nine elements defined in here. So what we need to do is we need to verify the six conditions, okay? So let's start first with unity conditions and then we'll go on to the orthogonality conditions. So for the unity conditions, we're saying that the length of x should equal to one. So I'm gonna take the first, the elements of the first column, the rotation matrix, which represents x. And I'm going to take each one of these numbers, square it, and add it together. So I'm squaring each one of these elements and adding them. And then, of course, you know, you can't get the square root, but anyway, the square root of 1 is 1. Um, so if you uh, do this operation here, you'll find out this these numbers would be equal to 1. Okay? And then for the y-axis, the length has to be equal to 1. So I'll go back here. I'm going to take the three elements on the second column, which represents y. I'm going to take these elements, square them, and add them, and that would have to be equal to 1. And if we do this operation, we're going to find out that it does equal to 1. Same thing for the z, the length has to be 1. So I go back to the rotation matrix, and I take the last uh, column, the third column here, which represents the z-axis. And then I take each one of the elements and then square it and add it here and that would have to result in 1. And if you do this at home, you'll find out these numbers uh, with the operations it equals to 1. Okay, so that verifies the unity conditions. Now I can move on to the orthogonality conditions. And I'm saying x transpose dot y should be equal to 0 because the cosine between them should be 90 degrees. Uh, the, the angle between them should be, should be 90 degrees, which means that the cosine of 90 degrees uh, would have to be zero okay so i'm going to take the elements for x which is the first uh, column here i'm going to take the transpose of that and put them here and then we're going to take the elements of y which is the second column <clears throat> i'm going to take that and put it here <clears throat> i'm going to perform this dot product of course one by three times three by one that, that will give me a scalar value and if you do this multiplication using MATLAB or any calculator uh, or by hand, you're going to find out that that equals to zero. Okay? I can, do the same, I can do the same thing for x and z. So I take the elements of x, the first uh, column. I transpose that and put it here. And then I take the elements for z, which is the third column here. And I put it the way it is up here. If I do this multiplication, I'll find out that that multiplication results in zero which proves uh, that this is orthogonal. Then I take the third uh, uh, equation, which is the y-axis and the z-axis. Okay, so I take the, th the elements of the second uh, column. 
I transpose it and put it here. And then the elements of Z, which is the third column, <coughs> I put it here. If I do this multiplication, I'll come out with uh, a zero right here. Okay? So that proves the three orthogonality conditions, and also we already proved the unity conditions for this problem. Now let's talk about the order of rotation. What we're saying here, we're saying when multiplying matrices, the order of multiplication is related to the order of rotation. So whenever we do multiple rotations, uh, one after another, the way we multiply matrices, uh, the order of that multiplication has to be related to uh, the order of rotations or sequence of rotations. Okay, so what we need to know about this here is that rotation B relative to A multiplied by rotation C relative to B does not equal to the other way around. Rotation of C relative to B multiplied by rotation B relative to A. Okay, so we cannot switch these and put this first and then this. It would not be equal to having this first and this afterwards. Okay. Uh, let's take an example. Show that the order of multiplication for the following two matrices uh, gives different results. So we're given here rotation about z by 30 degrees, and we're given rotation about x by 30 degrees. Okay. Now we want to prove that if we do a multiplication of this times this, would be different than doing the multiplication of this first times this after. All right, so we're going to do the multiplication both ways and show that the answers would be different. So if I take Rz first, multiplied by Rx later, okay, that would give me this matrix. And you can do this multiplication using MATLAB or uh, manually of, of, or calculator. And then if we take the other way, if I do rotation of X first, and then multiplied by rotation by, of, of Z, about Z, uh, after, then that would give me this result for the multiplication. And as you can see, they are different. We have zero, uh, negative 0 0.5 here, and we have uh, negative 0 0.43 here. And here we have 0 0.5, here we have 0 0.43, here we have 0, where here we have 0 0.25. So you get the picture. They look different, and they are different. Okay. So the order of multiplication is very important to be observed. Um, it, it does depend on the order of rotation. And we're going to talk more about this uh, later on in, in another topic within this uh, part of the chapter. Okay, so these two answers are obviously different and we need to uh, observe this.